Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Thursday, June 1st. Yes, it's already June. No, I cannot believe it. The Jaguars, they do have OTAs going on right now, leading up to mandatory minicamp. Then they'll have a break before training camp gets kicked off in July. But right now, not a lot of news coming out of Jacksonville. Not a lot of news coming out around the league in general. So I was just trying to think of different content that could be interesting. I decided to look back at what I believe are Trent Baalke's five best moves as Jaguars general manager. He's been the general manager for the Jaguars for over two years now. Had his first year with Urban Meyer, the complete debacle in 2021. And of course, a complete turnaround. With the Jaguars, Doug Peterson in 2022, Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence leading the way there. But yeah, I wanted to look back at Trent Baalke's best moves. He's been maligned for a lot of his time here in Jacksonville, understandably so early on, right? Things were not clicking in Jacksonville. It looked like one of the worst organizations in football prior to Doug Peterson arriving in Jacksonville, quite frankly. So I think some of the vitriol was earned by the entire Jaguars organization. But Trent Baalke, since Doug Peterson has arrived, he has made some really nice moves. And he made some nice moves in the draft prior to that as well. Also picked up some free agents who are still on the team contributing. But diving into this top five, I have to kick it off with number five overall. We'll go from five to one here. I think the fifth best move was just the trade downs to land Anton Harrison, right? Jaguars identified in the 2023 NFL draft that they wanted to to draft Anton Harrison to play right tackle for them and maybe play left tackle long term. Young tackle out of Oklahoma, a guy who I was a huge fan of. But that's not really why I'm saying that this was his fifth best move. I do love landing Anton Harrison. There's no question about that. I had a top 10 grade on this guy, thought he was going to be an absolute study in the NFL. So for the Jaguars to land him in the 20s, I absolutely love that. But for me, this is more about the process, right? The Jaguars were at 24 overall, and they felt like they could get some value by trading down. What you do is you have to read the board and you have to talk to the people you're trading with, making sure that they're not going to take your guy, right? And so the Jaguars, they traded down from 24 to 25 with the Giants, and then they traded down again from 25 to 27 with the Bills. What they had to factor in was making sure that the Cowboys would not take Anton Harrison at 26 overall and that they would not trade that pick to someone else who would take him. So there was a lot of different factors going on. The Jaguars knew who they wanted and they were able to move down twice and acquire more picks, which gives them more throws at the dartboard later on in the draft. I think that was a really heady move by Trent Baalke, a little bit of a risky move, calculated risk, if you will. I really liked that by Trent Baalke and the Jaguars entire staff. I thought it showed just a real good understanding of what teams are doing around you, of how to trade down, get some value. Kudos to Trent Baalke for that one. Number four here for me, Trent Baalke's best moves as Jaguars GM. It's signing Evan Ingram last offseason. Obviously, right now, the Jaguars and Evan Ingram are in long-term contract discussions. He's got the franchise tag placed on him as of today. But going back to the 2022 offseason, I think signing Evan Ingram to a one-year prove-it deal was one of the best moves Trent Baalke has made, uh, in large part because it was low-risk, did not have a major impact on on the Jaguars' financial situation, on their cap situation, right? And so what he was able to do for the Jaguars under Doug Peterson with Trevor Lawrence throwing him the football in this offense last year was nothing short of the very best receiving performance a, a tight end has had in a Jaguars uniform for a season. And now it took a little bit to get things going, and that was the case for a lot of the Jaguars players um, in 2022 But once things got rolling for Evan Ingram, Trevor Lawrence, and this offense, Ingram was one of the most productive tight ends in the entire league throughout the season, and he made critical plays down the stretch against the Titans, against the Chargers, to help get the Jaguars as far as they did. And he was one of the heart and soul type of players for this football team, was always one of the first guys in the building, last guys to leave, was always the guy that was going over and working with the quarterbacks, catching extra passes. He wanted to prove that he deserved to be a former first-round pick, right? Uh, Did not have the best run in New York with the Giants. Was up and down at times, you know, didn't always have the best support, the best quarterback thrown in the football. But he wanted to prove that he belonged, that he deserved to be a first-round pick, and that he deserved to get paid. And he proved everything he needed to prove 
in 2022. The only issue here is in 2023, the tight end market just didn't really quite go off the way Evan Ingram and his representation probably expected. So now the market is kind of screwing Evan Ingram over in these long-term contract discussions, and we'll see how it ends up playing out. But Going back to 2022, that Evan Ingram signing, I think it was massive. I don't think the Jaguars make the playoffs without Evan Ingram necessarily, and I definitely don't think they beat the Chargers without him. So awesome move by Trent Baalke and the Jacksonville Jaguars to bring in Evan Ingram last year, a guy who a lot of people viewed as a bust, quite frankly, right? He had drop issues. He wasn't always the most consistent player in New York. You bring him to Jacksonville, he has the best year of his career. He helps your team get to the playoffs and win a playoff game. That was a great signing by Trent Baalke. At number three over Overall, we've got drafting Tyson Campbell at 33. That was a move that I wasn't a huge fan of at the time because you look back at Tyson Campbell's Georgia tape, and this is a guy that he was absolutely long, he was sticky, he had great speed, but he really struggled to identify and locate the football and man coverage down the field, which led to a lot of long receptions, you know, going over his head. You saw that issue continue once he got to Jacksonville. But slowly and steadily, he improved on his ability to locate and track the football as a defender. And now you're looking at him as a potential top 10 corner in this league going into year three. He had top 10 PFF grade last year, nine passes defended, three interceptions. He's a really great run defender as well. I thought that that was a little bit of a bold pick at the time. I did not have Tyson Campbell valued that highly. And I was absolutely wrong. Tyson Campbell, the development he has shown, the ability to improve year over year, and his natural God-given speed and length, it's all combined for for a a great pick by Trent Baalke at 33 overall in the 2021 NFL Draft. And these next two moves, for my money, are kind of in a tier of their own. Probably There's probably two tiers here at the top, actually. Uh, But both of these moves I just think are great. And one of them happened just last week, and I know not a lot of people are going to really love this one, but I think trading Riley Patterson to the Detroit Lions and landing Brandon McManus at this point in the year is the type of move that can actually move the needle. There's not a lot of guys that are going to have a massive impact on the outcome of games for you outside of maybe at pass rush, maybe at nickel, maybe depth that guard or tackle for you, but not a lot of guys out there right now that the Jaguars are going to be able to add that can actually add points in critical moments. And I think Brandon McManus can help the Jaguars in situations where they're far away, right? He can kick 60 plus yard field goals, kick 50 plus yard field goals, 55 plus. It doesn't really matter where you are. Brandon McManus's leg is going to give you a chance to make a kick. He's got a huge leg, one of the, the biggest in the league. He's kicked over 70 field goals in his career of 50 or more yards. Just unbelievable stuff. Hasn't made all of them, but he gives you that opportunity to go get points at the end of a half. You know, when when you're down by a couple points or you just need to get the score a little closer, you need to extend your lead. Whatever it may be, the Jaguars were not comfortable asking Riley Patterson to kick long field goals last year. Insert Brandon McManus, whose career 90% from 50 yards and in, and he's, again, kicked over 70 attempts from 50 yards plus. So I think he's a massive upgrade for the Jaguars, not only in place kicking, but also on kickoffs, right? When you have a guy that can kick it out of the back of the end zone, he's going to help you out in a lot of different situations. I think adding Brandon McManus and trading Riley Patterson, getting some value back for him down the road, I think was a a great move by Trent Baalke. And look, Brandon McManus reached out to the Jaguars, reached out to Heath Farwell. He wanted to come down and play for the Jaguars, so this one was kind of handed to Trent Baalke. But... I don't think that many people were expecting the Jaguars to move on from Riley Patterson after he made 19 of 20 kicks down the stretch for the team and made a game-winning kick against the Los Angeles Chargers in the the wild-card round of the playoffs. But that's exactly what the Jaguars did because it's a move that makes the roster better. And it gives them a chance to score more points in 2023 than they did in 2022. Gives them more versatility, more flexibility with their kicking game. And you now look at their special teams units. They might have one of the very best special teams in in the NFL. You have Logan Cook, one of the best punters. Brandon McManus, a top 10 kicker in my opinion, bar none. 
Jamal Agnew, probably the best return man in the game today. You've got a lot of guys that are really good as core special teamers, you know, linebackers, safeties, etc. So I think the Jaguars have a chance to have one of the better special teams units in football, and Brandon McManus greatly aids them in that regard. Number one, this one isn't a tier by itself. We've talked about it a lot. I've said it's the best move Trent Baalke has made. To me, it's clear that trading for Calvin Ridley at the trade deadline in 2022 was the most heady move that Trent Baalke has made. We don't know whose idea it was to start flirting with the Atlanta Falcons about making this trade, but whosoever it was, Trent Baalke's going to get credit for it because he's the GM that pulled the trigger on it. And, and, unbelievable, right? I don't think anybody else around the league was really thinking about Calvin Ridley trading for him until probably the 2023 offseason, you know, get some more clarity on where he was at uh, mentally, physically, and then what the league was going to do regarding his indefinite suspension. And so instead of waiting, instead of, you know, getting in a bidding war this offseason, the Jaguars were like, well, could we potentially land him for cheaper at the trade deadline? And, and and make a trade that is low risk based on the different qualifiers for for the trade, right? You know, Trent, Trent Baalke, he included a lot of language that protected the Jaguars from giving up too many high-value draft picks in case it didn't work out with Calvin Ridley. Now, since he's been here in Jacksonville on the practice field, it looks pretty clear that things are going to work out. Uh, work out really well between Trevor Lawrence, Calvin Ridley, and this entire offense. He looks like the leader that this receiver group needed, that this offense needed as a whole, and I think he's going to open up the entire field for the Jaguars offense. He's going to help improve guys on the practice field, iron sharpening iron, and he's also going to take attention away from Christian Kirk, from Evan Ingram, from Zay Jones, from the running game. I think trading for Calvin Ridley was one of the best moves that any NFL GM has made in quite some time. I think it was extremely heady, again, doing it at the time he did it, including the language that was going to protect the team in case things didn't go well. Unbelievable move by Trent Baalke. I think he is slowly building a resume of very impressive moves as Jaguars GM. And, of course, you look back, drafting Trevor Lawrence, that was the easiest pick that he's ever going to make, right? So I'm not going to give him too much credit for that. I think there's 31 other GMs in the NFL that would have done the exact same thing. But getting Trevor Lawrence here, making all these moves that he's made over the last couple years, I think the Jaguars are clearly heading in a great direction with Doug Peterson at head coach, a great leader, Trevor Lawrence at quarterback, a great leader and great player, and Trent Baalke starting to make some really good moves as Jaguars GM. We'll see how it continues to play out for this franchise, but as of right now, it looks like the Jaguars are clearly the cream of the crop in the AFC South, a team that's going to be Uh, you know, competing for the playoffs and competing to go far in the playoffs year over year as long as Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence are in Jacksonville. And Trent Baalke did have a role in getting those guys here. So kudos to him. I think it's just good to, you know, take a look back at what Trent Baalke's done since, since becoming the Jaguars GM back in 2021. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can hit me up on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo. Drop a comment in the comment section below on YouTube. Really appreciate y'all. Have a good one.